Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, coming at you with some more Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition. And today I've got another sort of replay analysis slash build order to go through with you today. And if you want to rush with India, I'm going to be showing you the console of rush. Now without further ado, we are going to click that play button. I'm going to be playing of course as India, my opponent here Vader as Japan. Now normally when a lot of people think of a classic sort of India rush is either the 1010 which is you age up with 10 villages and you don't build a house and you get sepoys out from a forward agra fort that you build in age 2 or you do a 12 sepoy timing rush which is you you have your two elephants your two explorers and 12 sepoys and you get two sepoys from the age up you get five from a home city shipment and then you get a, another five out from the agra which leaves you with a total of 12 but 12 sepoys just isn't enough these days you know they are susceptible to tc fire and it's two shots and a sepoy is down from tc fire it didn't used to be like that but there was a slight change to their health so it is a bit more tricky to rush as india but i'm going to be showing you a consulate rush quite similar but I believe it's a lot more effective and um, it's more of a timing attack and it gives you a little bit more eco behind. So I'm just going to be showing you the opening here is India. Can be difficult to macro. Remember, the uh, Indian villagers cost wood, not food. So what you kind of want to do is have um, four or five or preferably five on wood when you start. You want to have one lure in your hunts and then you want to build a house when you can. And then you just want to every villager that keeps coming out you want to task them to your food so you just want to make sure that you have five right here on wood and then usually um this is with the help of snooper by the way I've, I've recently put a video up of snooper giving me a live coaching session so if you haven't seen that on my channel please feel free to check that out but yeah so what you kind of want to do here is when you're training your 12th villager so normally you want to age up with 13 so when you're training your second to last your 12th that is the point when you want to move these, start moving these bad boys over, over to food, so that then all of your villagers will be on food and you're ready to age up. Now, another thing to note, which I really struggle with here, so this is going to look a bit awkward, but I really struggle trying to put my agri fort down here. I don't know what the hell was going on. It, it was just saying it was too close to the enemy TC, so I couldn't build it. It was really annoying. But what you want to do is when you have about 600 food, you want to start sending two or three villagers, depending on what your timings are like, but two or three villagers, you want to send those out to the center of the map, ideally on the other half, on your opponent's half of the map, and you want to build your agri fort. Now, when you build your agri fort, you want to put it ideally near a gold mine or a hunt or a TP line is really good just in case, so you can secure that if you need your TP in the future. That can be a really good spot. So you see that my three villagers are going out. They are a little bit late. It's 6.50 food and they're walking out. So that's a little bit late. And um, you can see the rest of the vills still on food. And when it hits a, when it hits 800, we want to move all of these vills onto wood. When we're in transition, we want to move them all onto wood because we want to get that next villager out as soon as possible. Because remember, with Asian sieves, you build a wonder to be, a, to be able to get into the next stage. Just bear that in mind. So you can see here, I have a real struggle. I'm trying to put the aqua fort anywhere. It won't let me put it here. It won't let me put it here. It won't let me put it here. It, it was a complete nightmare. Look at this. Look, I'm at 960 food now. I haven't moved my vills over to wood. So this was actually really... This turned out to be a, a really good game to demonstrate um, the build order. But just this bit here was a real mess up. You can see that I've got... I had about 1,000 food there. So way over. I should have moved everyone over to wood. I'm now moving them over to wood. I've got an excess of 260 here. And what I had to do, I had to run my vills back and put my aqua fort here. Um, I'll definitely remember that next time for this map. Just remember that, guys. If you get this map, I uh, can't remember what the map's called. doesn't tell you there. But if you get this map, really do not put... You won't be able to put your aqua fort here. It will not let you. It will say that the TC, the enemy TC is too close. It won't let you do it. So you're going to have to back it up and put it right here. Not the end of the world, but it just means that it takes a little bit longer for our troops to get in. Now you can see here that our enemy has gone to put a wonder down right near here. Kind of an unusual spot for the uh, Japanese player to put a wonder, but they're going to go and do that right now. And the first card that we got, I forgot to actually show you, but this is this is the deck. This is the 1v1 land deck. This deck is exactly the same to the one in the previous video where I was being coached by Snooper. 
So you can find that there, or you can just screenshot this and have a look at it. But the first card that we went for was Distributivism, which gets us that wood trickle. Very, very crucial. And now what we're doing is we are, we should be um, moving everyone over to wood, which I did. And you want to build a second house. And then you want to start moving some villagers, three or four, over to gold. Now, the reason you want to do that is because you want to start producing sepoy, which is your musk unit from your agrifort, as soon as possible. So the minute you age up, you want to be able to have the resources in there to start training sepoy. So I've moved three or four over to gold and then um, the rest over to food. And what you want to do, you just want to keep, I mean, this is a little bit too much. You just want to keep five on wood again. So you remember at the start when we had five on wood, this is exactly what you want to do here. So you want to, once you built your house, you want to then move all your vills over to, um, you want to move your vills, some over to gold, some over to food. Um, but what you're, what you're still going to be chopping for here, just bear in mind, what you're still going to be chopping for is a consulate. So ideally what you want to do is build another house, which I've done here. Then you want to build a consulate and then you want to build another house. Now the reason you want to do that is because you're going to need population space for various unit shipments and the main unit shipment is going to be from the consulates and we're going to i'm going to show you that very shortly so i'm aging up with the agrifort of course it's pretty much the 95 percent go to if you're around my level you're pretty much always going to go with the agrifort and there we go so i'm building the consulate and i've got a little too many on uh, gold here this was this was me sort of trialing this sort of the first time on the ladder but it was a really nice game and i thought i'd show you it but as with all these sort of guides or build orders that I show you, there are a few mistakes that I do when I'm actually playing in real life. But we can, I can point those out and correct them and let you guys know what you need to do. So you can see I moved them over to food, which is good. You can see I've got a little bit too much gold. Remember, sepoys, I believe, um, sepoys, yeah, cost 90 food and 30 gold. So they do cost a lot of food. So you kind of need to have a, a lot more on food than gold. We have seven on wood, probably a little bit too much. You can see that I'm starting to over chop a little bit there. Now with the consulate, you're going to want to start allying with the British and your next card is going to be Diplomatic Intrigue. That's going to be your third card. That is going to give you 300 export and it's going to reduce the cost by 75% of any export. And what you're going to be wanting to do is you're going to be wanting to get out the six Musketeers, which are these six Redcoats. You see here, I've got my Vils moving over here, just going to gather some hunts. Uh, quite an aggressive hunt here for me to gather, but if you do build an Agra and there's a hunt nearby, use your villagers that were built that was building the Agra and the Consulate to take a hunt. Don't walk them all the way back to your base. And of course, as we're doing this, we want to keep with the constant villager production. Okay, That's why we've got these guys on wood here. We've got six on wood now. We want to keep that villager production up. You can see now I've got my red coats. That's from the consulate. So I've got some red coats. I've got some sepoy. And you can see here that I've got a total of uh, 12 units. And now, yeah, significantly more. Now, I, if my macro was spot on, I would have been able to get a full batch of sepoy, two full batches of sepoy, and the red coats. That would have been 16 infantry units. Bear in mind that the uh, the red coats are actually a little bit yeah they're a little bit weaker than weaker than the sepoy. However, they are still very very good um, infantry units for age two. Because remember, sepoys are one of the best or the best. Well, minus the African Civ at the moment, they were the best age two heavy infantry unit, musk unit. So now I stumble across a shrine here. Now the Toshogu shrine, that's going to be most likely a shrine boom. You can see that he's got a couple of shrines out here. I didn't actually go over and siege those. I just went directly for the base. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. And you just want to keep maintaining villager and sepoy production. You can see I've got my vills. I've got no population here. So just make sure that you're always building houses because you will, you will use that population up extremely quickly. You can see here I'm being a little bit aggressive. And my next card I'm getting is five sepoys. Now, this next card all depends on the situation, I'm afraid. So the first three cards that I showed you, so the distributivism, the 300 exports, um, those, sorry, those first two cards, sorry, 
are your go-to. Your third card could either be, I mean, if you're going to be rushing, right, it's probably going to be either your five Sepoy or it's going to be your four Sowers. If you think you want to be a bit more on the safe side, then go for the 700 wood. That'll give you more infrastructure. You can then start getting a market and you can then start getting um, your economic upgrades, which will really help you. So there's a few things that you can do there. But in this case, I went for another five Sepoys. Um, I would suggest most of the time going for four sowers because a lot of the time the enemy is going to react to your sepoys and they're going to start making either crossbowmen or some sort of skirmisher unit and cavalry are exceptionally well or sowers are exceptionally good against skirmisher units so that is a good reactionary card to go for if that's even a word reactionary reactionary a word I don't know anyway another five sepoys on the way so you can see here now we've got a total of 14 sepoys. Yes. We've got 20 military units and we're, we're pop capped again. But we really need to keep creating those houses. See now he's reacted. He's got a few Yumi archers here. So I am just backing off just a little bit. Assessing the situation then pushing forward. And here I've got five sepoys about to come out. I'm going to push forward here because there's just... there's. I'm in a good space here just to keep pushing forward. And what you want to do with sepoys, oh, what you want to do with sepoys and um, a lot of infantry units like this, when you are going for a rush, you've really got to make sure to shoot and then walk forward. You want to really be aggressive. Just keep shooting, walking forward, shooting, walking forward. Especially when you have a, a sower or sowers or a cav unit. When that cav hits the enemy army, they're going to be snared, which means they're going to be moving a lot slower. And then what you want to do with your infantry unit is get as close to them as possible and start shooting them. And then keep moving and chase them down. And what it means is it, it really overwhelms the enemy because they don't know what to do. Uh, they're going to be meleeing your cav. You can use your infantry then to clean them all up. And that's kind of like a really good micro tip there. You can see I'm just moving. I'm being, you've got to be a little bit careful because we are under t TC fire here. And there could be any sort of pop from the TC. Like militia. I'm just making sure to focus on a few villagers there that I saw. So I'm just backing off. This is a good thing to do. Don't overcommit. You mustn't overcommit with this build order. I'm telling you, it can't be. This isn't an all in strategy. We're not going all in and, and that's it. You know, we're just being, you know, decisive in what we do. You know, we just need to take a breather. We're getting our next card look is four sowers. So now we're going to have the cavalry coming. That's going to be great against the Yumis. Just need to be a little bit careful. See, I'm backing off. I don't want to take that fight, you know. And now the sowers are here, so I'm feeling more confident. I'm going to rally up my further sepoys from the Yakka Fort. I'm going to push in now. Got the sepoys coming around the back here. Look at this, perfect. And he sees it. He's running. So look, push forward with your military. It's exactly what I'm doing. Pushing forward. Pushing forward. Getting those sepoys in. And now he's got a choice. He, he's got to back off or, or fight. If he backs off, it's going to be slower for him. And you can see here, I'm really close to him. Look at that. See? And I've only lost one one sower so far out of that shipment. Keep moving them forward, moving them forward. Look at that. Cleaned up. Done. I saw two Yumi's left. And look at all my look at my force. And now he's popped some sentries. And what I'm going to do, going to move those sowers away. Don't want to get them and then just use the infantry to clear them up. They're sort of a pike unit. And he's got five ashes here. But it's, it's not going to be enough. I'm still creating sepoys. So another five sepoys coming out. I've now got a wood shipment on the way. So that's a good next card to go for. So what have we gone for? We've gone for the distributivism. We've gone for the 300. Then we went for the five. Then we went for the four. Five sepoy, four sower. So we didn't have to do the five sepoy. Wasn't 100% necessary. Could have just gone for the four sowers. And then we would have been able to maybe get our 700 wood earlier. It doesn't really matter whatever you guys feel like you want to do. You, what you could do is you could start macroing for more gold and you could go for the, the 10 tiger claws or just go for the 700 coin and either maybe age up if you want to or maybe start producing some more gold heavy units like sowers and gurkhas. Gurkhas are your skirmish unit and they're very, very good. So for example, if we were struggling here with his Ashigaru, we might need to sprinkle in a few Gurkhas to deal with the heavy infantry. So here, just cleaning up some villagers. Villagers are really important here. Don't try and focus all of your military on just the five Ashigaru. Try and focus down the villagers here that he's not putting in his TC. And you can see now that I got my 700 uh, wood shipment here. That's going to really help me. 
And you can see that I'm just going to clear up some villagers here. They're not going to be able to escape. He's got some more Ashigaru, but it's not going to be enough. I'm just going to keep moving these guys over to here. Got another five Sepoy on the way. And now I've got foreign logging. So that, there you go. More eco coming in off the back of what I did. And there it is, guys. GG. GG. So there you go, guys. So obviously, not every game is going to be like this. I tried to do this against the Haudenosaunee. And I really threw the first fight. And they managed to actually overwhelm me with Tomahawks and um, Aenas, which are the Bowman unit. And I lost a game, you know, doing it. You are going to lose games. You're not going to win them all. However, the more you refine this, I mean, there was lots of mistakes I did. You saw all the mistakes. You know, I was messing around with the Agrifort. Uh, I couldn't build it here for some reason. That annoyed me and I had to build it here. Um, I was pop capped every now and then as well. And I didn't macro perfectly at the start to, to get my full batch of five sepoys. So lots of errors, lots and lots of errors. So there's always room for improvement. But I hope you guys can use this. It's a very interesting rush for India. We are seeing more rushes uh, with the meta at the moment. But give this one a go. Give the consulate rush a go. It's nice. And um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about India as a sieve. Uh, how you play against them, how you play as them. And of course, feel free to give this a go. I encourage you to give this a go. Try out a different sieve. That's what I always like to do. And of course, let me know what you think uh, by dropping a like on the video if you enjoyed the video. And of course, you can find all other sort of tips, tricks, guides, um, all sorts of videos on my channel. And you can catch me streaming on Twitch, of course, at Widgie one Have a good day, guys.